So let's continue to talk about GANs and then I, I would like to spend some time to talk uh, some a final topic. I, I think I will talk about graph, uh, graph neural network because it's a very hot topic right now. So um, so just give a revision, I refresh uh, your memory what we had last time. So we have GANs is a pretty simple model. Like we have uh, two components, a, a discriminator and a generator. And the goal is really try to train both of them uh, at the same time, but we like to eventually like, take advantage of the generator. That's why like, we call it a generative like, uh, network. And it's an adversarial because like, these two are playing uh, kind of a game with each other, trying to get advantage of each other essentially. So, um, and then like, we kind of like, talk about like, okay, derive like what's the optimum like discriminator is simply just like that. Like if we assume the, um, the, the, uh, the uh, well, what I mean to say the loss function for the discriminator, discriminator and the generator are just these two guys here. Simply, uh, if you remember say like for the discriminator, let's say if I pull data uh, from the, true data here. So I want to maximize this uh, probability. Uh, this, this basically score that like the discriminator think that like X is uh, from the genuine data. So therefore like if this is from the genuine data, we want to maximize that way right? or in other words, minimize the minus log of that. And on the other hand, if the data is fake, then we want to maximize uh, this guy basically maximize like one minus D Right, or like uh, minimize minus log one over one minus d, and the generator will be just the exact opposite. I mean, the generator generator loss will be the exact opposite of the like, discriminator loss, but because the generator uh, for this part like it doesn't have control of this part here because it can only control generator g here, so then we can omit this part, and then uh, at the end of last time we say that like. Um, we can have a, a, a small modification sometimes to get a better training uh, to using this kind of long saturation cost uh, function trick here. Uh, basically like we just have the generator loss function instead of originally is a minus this guy here, we replace with this one here instead because I, at the beginning, the generator is not doing a very good job uh, it, in this regime, basically, if in the original for the original loss function, like this would be pretty flat. So instead, we would like to uh, use this function. Instead, it would be like this. So the gradient will be like larger, and so it will be trained faster. So um, let's talk about like some other refinements. So one refinement is as like, long as this one side labeling, uh, oh sorry, one side label smoothing. So one side in the sense like. If you think of like what we did, like in the loss function, the discriminator loss function is really, uh, I can rewrite it in, in this form like that. It's basically like if the data is like from the true, okay, if the input is from the true data, then we will say the loss will be like computing the cost entropy of a delta function, like with uh, one. <clears throat> uh, what I want to say like it's not quite clear. So anyway, maybe it's clear like in this slide here. So what I want to say is like something like that. So the original um, function, okay, original is, uh, uh, what I want to say, the original one is like, uh, okay, yeah, maybe I just ignore this D star here, let's just DX here. So, um, when I have the true data, I should have like uh, minus log dx, right? When x is true data, p data from the true data. Originally, like we want to like this, but this one you can think of this is really uh, like a uh, cross entropy error between. Uh, dx go here, so dx is something like that, like uh, dx, 
this itself is I can think of it as some kind of probability, right? So what I mean like, uh, um, uh, for just this value here, uh, I, oh, okay, well, what I want to say is uh, not quite clear. So remember like what, what cross entropy is. Like if you have like cross entropy, like for example, like comparing like, uh, P and then when you have like, like let's say this is the score here, let's say like have the uh, probability output like of uh, of something like right? okay like 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 I fit classes here, let's say this is P here, right? This is P here. So this is like the ground truth class, let's say. So this is sum up to one, right? Whatever. And then I have the ground truth is like that this Q, let's say, right? And then Q is equal to for here is one, right? So this is the true cast for the worst is just zero. And the cross entropy loss will be just uh, like QX log uh, PX sum over X, something like that, right? Minus also. And this is actually just equal to this, right? Because I, for the worst of this value is equal to zero, it's not existing. So then this is like just the cross entropy loss, right? With this delta function here, assuming that Okay, the for the ground truth, I'm hundred percent sure that like the ground truth label is correct, basically saying. So now, the label's moving is saying that okay, I'm not so sure that my label is exactly correct. So how about I just tone it down a little bit? Maybe like my label is like point nine here, for the rest of cards maybe like point zero five and point zero five here, something like that. So or if I only have like two cards here, like 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 in this case, I can only be. Uh, for the discriminator, whether it's genuine or not genuine, right? you only have two classes. So then I, I can label smooth that like only two classes. Now, this one is point nine, the worst is like point, point one, something like, I'm sure that like, this is genuine with only 90% uh, confidence instead of 100% confidence. So then my score then, right? This one will be replaced by uh, dx log, let's say 0.9, right? And then minus 0.1 log, one minus dx in that, right? So this is exactly this, this term here, right? Okay. And of course, like my dx in this case, I, like last time we mentioned that, okay, I can use calculus of variation to find the optimum dx, right? So let's say the optimum is dx is d star here. I put up that like by lambda delta x, delta x and delta x is like some random function here. Then uh, lambda is supposed uh, uh, sufficiently small. Then I take the derivative with respect to lambda so it goes to zero. So now let, let's do the labels moving on both sides. So I can, for the ground truth, uh, what I want to say not the ground truth, for, for the training data, the general training data, I won't be like hundred percent sure that it's correct, but I would just say that it's one alpha, one minus alpha, that it is the genuine data. And also like for the model data, I may say it's not hundred percent saying that it's fake. I can say it's only one minus beta belief that is fake. Or in other words, like uh, I will think that it has a beta uh, probability that like is genuine. So then I have this labels moving on both sides and if you can do this like cal calculus of variation like previously, then you take derivative and so on. you get the optimum discriminator is equal to this one, right? So we have this one minus alpha and beta instead coming in. So one thing you see the trick we say is like, we call this one side labels moving, right? Not two side labels moving because like, you actually don't want to smooth like both sides. You only want to smooth this, the data side here. So given your training data, you just cannot be 100% sure saying that it's not really fake. That's what we are trying to do. But given the fake data there, like you want to say it's 100% sure this is fake. Uh, because I, if otherwise, like let's say I have this one instead, right? I have this one instead, beta is not, that is like beta is not exactly equal to zero. Then if I have this P data is very small here, so let's say p data is very small compared with like, uh, it's a like much smaller than p model for some particular x here. 
then in that case, I, I would just say, have a very high confidence to think that that, that fake data is correct or that like fake data is genuine. Um, and that's not something we want to have. So that's why like, you only have one, one side labels moving. So this is just repeating what, I'm say, what I said. So another refinement that is, uh, of course, like, we will still use like batch LOM and so on and so forth like to train your GANs. But if when you use batch LOM, um, you may have some kind of artifact like that is say like, have very strong uh, intra-batch uh, correlation. So, so, um, uh, so you see like this is like belong to the same batch here, this is another batch here uh, generating. Like you see like you can kind of feel that like, okay, this is like two different categories, right? So even though like all these like kind of weird images, like it looks like this is like one batch, this is another batch. So what we can do is say like, some uh, fixing this is say like, uh, we can do a reference batch. LOM is just taking like a reference batch is say like, a much bigger batch. So or like in, in other words, we take multiple batches together and then compute that um, mean and variance and use that statistics to normalize everyone instead. But sometimes like, it may uh, uh, it, it may not be desirable that uh, so we, we will kind of like overfit because I, when you use this reference, reference batch, like which reference you pick will be like quite important. So another uh, kind of like possible solution is say like another trade-off, like I just take an intermediate uh, step here. So we, we keep a reference batch, but at the same time, like we combine this reference batch with the current batch, current batch here. We call it this a virtual batch LOM. So the statistics will be computed by both the combined batch here. So that, that's uh, fixing the um, kind of artifact from uh, batch LOM here. So another remark here is like, of course that GANS is like you tr trying to train both the generator and the discriminator, right? So um, the fact is that like, usually it's much more important to uh, have a good discriminator than the generator. Um, and uh, so uh, what, what someone can do is say, okay, I can run more D step rather than G step. So that, that can be, uh, yeah, that can be one fix. And uh, also like, uh, it's important that not to kind of limit D here. So sometimes I, it's kind of, uh, 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 what should I say, um, tempting to make your D a little bit dumber because you see how oh, your generator is not improving. Like it's always like the discriminator can uh, correctly identify whether or correctly point out that your generated, generated data is fake. So maybe I should dumb down the discriminator a little bit and let the generator to catch up. But usually this is like, more harmful than useful. Um, and uh, uh, so, and remember, like in the last equilibrium, the last equilibrium that we are interested in is actually the generator. We want, we want the discriminator to be perfect. So, the discriminator is perfect, then the only way you get a really good generator is that like the generator generates something is like stat stat statistically indistinguishable from the real data, right? So, therefore, we don't want to dumb down the uh, discriminator. And also if we look at the mean mass problem here, so um, the mass mean and mean mass problem here, oh, okay. Uh, know that like the solution here is not the same. Like if you do mean first and do the mass first, uh, in general, the solution is not the same. Okay, I, I, I'm totally giving this out like anyway. So yeah, but it's, it's fine. So um, doing minimization first, Actually, I have to slide here. Maybe let like just ask you the question anyway. So, um, which side give me uh, a smaller, oh, uh, smaller, uh, smaller result? Let's say. So, 
So these two formulation like on the right and the, on the left, like which one is smaller? Uh, it's kind of the hinges on the on the slides if you read 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 below. Yes. Uh so you, you, you see that like okay, if if I I have the minimum in the in the loop then actually it would be smaller. So you can figure, uh, if you are uh, I'm not 100% sure that like you can just take a simple example, for example, a simple example here. If I try to do, I, I, this discriminator trying to get the minimum out of these values, right? And the generator trying to get the maximum out of this value, right? So if the inner loop is the discriminator, I'm, I'm going to do minimization first, then I will get one and two, right? And then I'm trying to maximize, I will get two, right? Out of one and two. So on the other hand, if I'm going to do generator, generator going to add first, then I will try to maximize, I get like uh, on this side four and three, right? And then I try to minimize vertically, I will get three here. So uh, therefore you see like the, the one in the inner loop is really dominating. So if we want the discriminator to be smarter, then we actually want to pick this one rather than this one. So we want to make, the discriminator in the in the loop, um, and uh, so that that's a uh, that's actually that exactly the situation here. So um, if if we put the generator in the in the loop, there's a situation that like this is like one example, uh, toy example that like trying to learn this, uh, uh, learn this distribution here. So we want to generate data points like from here, right? This is the distribution of data points. So so this is like just two dimensional data points that we want to generate from here. So the train set will be like, sometimes I have a pawn here, sometimes I have a pawn here, sometimes I have a pawn here and so on and so forth. Now, if I, I put like the generator in the training set, you, you will end up with like training result like this. So after like, uh, this is a 25K step, you just get into one mode. So like you have the generator will be generating something. Okay, it's, it's, it will be gener generating like from this mode but you, you won't get result from all the rest here. So this uh, phenomenon is known as the mode collapsing, and this is not something we like. And so to counter that, say we want to put the, uh, okay, one way to counter that like, is pretty uh, intuitive right? and uh, uh, obvi obvious. Basically, like if I don't want to, to have mode collapsing, one way I can do is say, okay, let's keep generating, but when I generate, if I have like data generated, like it's like the same as my before, like it's like close to my original, then I would discard that data. And I'll keep generating until like I get something is like far away. So um, this is a, uh, yeah, you, you can definitely do that. Another way is like using this uh, discriminator in the inner loop idea. So we want to put the discriminator in the inner loop, then uh, what we can do is like we can do many in the loop before, many discriminator update before I have generator update. So essentially, like we do a unroll, unrolling of your discriminator step. So here, like it's actually doing um, uh, doing steepest descent for the discriminator. So like you just uh, keep unroll many steps of the discriminator until you update the generator. So it will give you a as you can see, like for this toy problem here, after 25K, like it can, uh, the, this, the generator uh, managed to, um, to get the uh, very close to the original distribution. So also look at another formulation, like uh, the least square scan uh, that uh, is very similar to what we had earlier. So remember, Earlier we have like the cross entropy loss, right? Something like uh, log. Uh, we have here the discriminator loss is a log uh, d x a minus something here, and then minus log one minus d x d g x, right? Something like this. So, but instead uh, d g c should be like 
yeah. So, but instead, like we can use also like this least square law. So in the sense that like, we just instead of like use cos entropy, we will say that dx should be close to one. So we use the square error to model that. And and also like dgx should be dgz should be close to zero. So therefore, it just take a square error here. Um. And uh, this is an example like uh, combine like GANs with like convolutional network. So um, here this like this GAN is quite famous, and uh, you see like there's some like uh, fine print here like what they do like precisely. I I won't go into detail now here. So so you see like you can understand this thing like, now I guess. Uh, for example, like you know, using batch ROM and then like uh, value, like uh, okay, use value like in all layers, uh, except like the output you use 10 H and, and for discriminator you use like okay, for the generator you use value and discriminator you use like uh, liquid value. Um, I don't know why they use that. Like so, so probably they try all lots of combination and uh, eventually chose this one. Um, and uh, for this again, you see like uh, the generator is like this. So you have like start with this C random number, right? So um, just uh, length 100, I guess, right? So you have uh, to try to do the trans convolution, right? So you have like a four by four filter and uh, you have like a 10, 24 filter. So you become like a four by four, 10, 24 like uh, dimension uh, object here. Uh, Four by four, ten, four by four by ten, twenty-four tensor here. So then you you can do another convolution, like again a trans convolution. Uh, if you remember, like when we talk about like uh, segmentation, like we mentioned a like, trans trans transpose convolution, right? So to do the continue up sampling, up sampling, and so on, to get back the original image. Um, and this is some we saw like training using this like. Uh, Elson data set and uh, uh, or Elson data set. I don't know how to how do they pronounce this data set. Um, it's basically a warm data set. You can see like uh, like they just generate like like worms here and looks quite realistic. Um, and uh, okay, one 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 thing like another uh, interesting remark like to mention is like. Similar to what we talk about for uh, what to what, the representation, Z, because I, okay, after you have the generator, you have the Z, go through this like, generator, you get this uh, image or like whatever, like the, the data that you want to generate, right? So let's say this is generating image. This Z here is like, similar to what to what, what to what. It gives you some kind of web, some form of representation here. Uh, that is can be like manipulable, manipulable. Yeah, is that a word? I'm not so sure. So, for example, here, like this is like faces generated by Z that is trained to be like generate smiling faces, smiling woman. I guess like this is like generated by like neutral woman. This is a like, uh, neutral man, something like that. So, if you you do a average of this, so smiling woman. Uh, and then like average of this neutral woman uh, mi minus this average of neutral woman and add this a like, neutral man and take this result as Z and generate that, then you will get this like smiling man, something like. So uh, even though it's like actually have some more collapsing also, you see like they are very similar. Um, oh yeah, that's reasonable to be similar because I have the same C here, but I guess, yeah. Uh, and I can also like do this like, with glasses, say like, man with glasses, subtract like this is a like, man with no glasses, and then I like, add woman with glasses, then I can generate images with like woman with glasses. Um and uh GANs are pretty amazing, but like this is some earlier results. I guess it's still relevant. Like um you see like GANs uh, managed to generate. If you look at it from a distance, like this still look like some kind of animals, but if you get close to that, um, 
you see like this is just getting real, right? Like for example, you have the loss of eyes here and uh, several legs here and so on and so forth. So um, they, they managed to get like orientation wide sometimes you see like, this is looks like a dark face right here, right? But it doesn't know like a dog has to have how many faces. So you know the face would be like uh, around like Leah, I mean, on top of the sh shoulder and so on. But but um, I mean, the content using it usually is all like, for example, like this is like multiple legs and so on. Um, there's another other interesting uh, kind of like work I like to mention this stack scan here, uh, just do a multiple layer of GANs. I, so I do a first general, first stage GANs, I do a lower resolution and then do a second stage and then a higher resolution. And at the same time, like the paper itself trying to do a, um, a reverse captioning. So you give a sentence here, trying to generate image that just fit the sentence. So for example, here you start with, uh, this is a, a, the bird is a gray and so on and so forth here. But it just go for a, uh, let's see. Oh. Yeah, okay, this is, I just added some random generators. This is, I extract a mean and variance and added some noise, like some random Z here. So, um, and then like this is give you the mean of that thing. And then you add another like kind of like perturbation like, as the input. And then like after the generator, like this generator image, right? And then the image you can uh, have a second level of generation, can say, right? And then like you get a larger image here. And then you can down sample it back uh, and then get a smaller image. Wait a sec. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the this discriminator. This is like the generator, right? So, um, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So for both both sides, I, I get this down sample. You may ignore that. Like it's not very important. So, but for both of these, side, you are going to you have the real image, right? In the training, you have real images, right? So you have real images. Uh, and you 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 will put like this real images on the generated images in the lower resolution for the discriminator, trying to see like whether you, you want to train the discriminator able to distinguish right, the fake image and the real image in the lower resolution, but also in the high resolution. And also like you want to have this generated image put together with the message itself to make sure they match with each other, something like that. Yeah, more or less like this. So, and, and you see like uh, you have this first stage is like this, second stage, stage is much more refined, very, very realistic. Like you have this small yellow bird, like the back crown and then sharp black point of beak. It, it just looks very realistic. And like you have another one here. Um, and even though it's like quite a bit dated, like several years old, it's like really very impressive. So uh, there's another work like it's like eigens. Uh, I'm not sure it's even like implemented like probably in some of these uh, artist packages. So it's like you put draw a line here, then it will just um, generate automatically generate the image for you. For example, you want to sketch like a mountain like a sky so i just sketch one stroke here and, and then another stroke like to represent as like, some green grasses uh so of course i, I guess it's like it's more or less like a toy at this moment you cannot uh, um kind of like realistically uh kind of like used by uh, artists are like, still like very uh, primitive at the moment um okay i guess that's it like so uh this is Gans, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. This is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I, I. Several years ago, when this first came out, I did pull the code and play with that. But, uh, yeah. I, I, I. It's a bit too old now. Like, it's if I try to pull it again, it's a little bit annoying. I need to match all these old settings, so I didn't try to do it again recently. So, but yeah, that that's pretty cool. I actually like you. Um, yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, I encourage you guys to dig into that. 
So um, this slide is really quite dated, it's say from the uh, Stanford course again, but it's a several years old. Um, and of course, again, it's still very important. I am, yeah, so, okay. So anyway, I, I guess I, I still have one topic to talk about. So I guess I will just move on quickly. Um, I, I don't know how far I can go, but I, I, I hopefully I can cover most thing I like to talk about. Uh, so, uh, so for the last thing that I like to talk about is I like to talk about uh, graph neural network. I, I was thinking, like, of course, like, there's many materials I can talk about. Like, I skip many stuff like I talk about in the past. For example, like, uh, uh, auto encoder and and uh, this uh, was that. Uh, Oh, I said I forgot like Boltzmann machine and so on and so forth. Like, um, but uh, I I I should say to talk about graph neural network because it's a uh, uh, I think it's a like, very useful like for I'm also like for Boltzmann machine and so on. Like it's uh, it's a bit yeah that may be useful again. Like you don't know like sometimes this old technique you just go take take that back. And sometimes I guess have like some old idea actually useful. Uh, and like for autoencoder, uh, yeah, autoencoder is very simple concept. I guess I uh, essentially maybe like a few words like for autoencoder is like, if you, you just train to, if you have like given the um, data, uh, for example, you have images and like you want to train a representation, you create a model like this, right? So you fit in the, above the, Basically, like 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 this. Uh, this is I like doing the semantic segmentation, and you have this image. Okay, this is an image. So you you put like image at the input and the output at the same time. And here, like you have like a telescope structure, like you have like a thinner representation here. And then at the middle layer here, after, assuming that you train well, again like the loss here can be just the square square loss. So you want to have this. We generate the image to be like close to the original image. If you manage to do that, then of course like the middle layer is able to capture like all the information, right? Otherwise, not able to recover the original image. So therefore, you can take the coefficient in the middle layer as a uh, m representation, and this is a long as auto encoder. So now, okay, finish talking about auto encoder, so we can move on. So, um, so I like to talk about this graph neural network. So you see like for all the data we talk about like um, in this course is like we have 1D, 2D, or we didn't really talk much with 3D, but 3D you can essentially the same thing, right? So, but all of them are structured data. But nowadays, I uh, expect people work on data science, they're, they're more and more like unstructured data, right? For example, like we have social lateral data, you can have like user messages. Like if you just, uh, I guess images or videos are too much, but maybe just think of like each of these users are nodes and they're connected with their friends and then they have messages is the input. And then like, uh, I, I, I this here is just like, yeah, as I mentioned here, like AIJ is like long at this adjacency matrix here. So, and uh, how do we spell that? Something like that, I guess. Adjacency matrix. And so, and you can represent this data in a graph, right? In the sense that like you, you have a node, you, you know that a graph is just a composed of node here and code node and edges, right? So we have the edges that connect together and then have the node, the vert vertex vertices are the, uh, and that, that basically from the graph, right? And I can have a, uh, I can introduce this a like, graph signal. Actually, the people study graph signal processing like for the last decade. Also, like say, it, it it was like I guess it's still um a active research topic, but I, I guess it's like um uh it's eclipsed by by this graph neural network. Say people probably like study graph signal processing. I'm moving into this area here, so so. For graph signal processing, you can just think of, oh, okay, for the graph here, I can put signal like in each of these nodes, right? So I have this node say I have like X1 here, signal X2 and X3 and X4, right? So 
in a sense that uh, you can think of like all signals are like graph signals, right? Because I, I can think of like uh, maybe, for example, like I have one D signal here. It's also a graph, but it's just a, a path graph here, right? right? I can have test signals here, I have nodes here. So it's just a path graph. And I can have images here. Right? Image here is like a two dimensional uh, graph. So it's a two degree graph here. And uh, okay, but that's a catch here. You know, but I, I just, you can think of it this way. So, but I, I, that's a catch. Maybe I will talk about that later. So, uh, and for, of course, I, in general, like if you don't have this structured data here, besides social ledger, there's other application. For example, you can analyze a uh, fMRI. You can think of like the brain have like different regions and the regions have like signal on the apparently also, right? And then like, they are not interconnected to each, to everywhere, every of the regions, but maybe only interconnected to one region, like sparsely to another region. So then again, it form a graph way somehow. And we can also talk about chemistry. So you can apparently like for any chemical particle or molecules um, can be represented nicely with a graph way. So you can think of like each of the molecule, uh, is the molecule, yeah, it's a, each of the atoms are kind of linked together with some bonds, right? And the bonds will be the edges. And then the atom itself, it has the information, for example, like the, what's the element there, like what's the coordinate, what's the charge and so on, that would be the information, right? So then we, we, again, we have some graph signal here. So the question is like, how can we maybe just similar to like from uh, classic 2D image processing to a kind of like CNN. So we want to have a filter for graph signal also like uh, generalized from the case that the graph uh, the filter itself is like PD, P defined, P design into a trainable uh, kind of graph, graph network. So they, that's basically our, our uh, motivation here. Now, okay, by the way, I did mention uh, all, all this, I, I kind of like borrow these materials by a course by Safier, uh, Safier uh, Besson. He, he's a, uh, a professor in, in, uh, at uh, Singapore, was a national, no, uh, NTU, I think, a national, uh, no, ah, what was that? Uh, so anyway, this is the only two universities in Singapore, like the other one. It's not the NUS, the other one. So, um, and uh, and he, yeah, he, he has a, a uh, uh, and also like he gave a guest, guest lecture with uh, Yang Lacun's uh, uh, course. Uh, you can find, okay, if you search for Yang Lacun, it's NYU has a course like posted like last year and I basically borrow from there. So, okay, anyway. Um, so let's go back to CNN. Think of like if we have CNN, CNN like for a conf layer is nothing but doing convolution, right? So I have uh, a image data. It's just really doing dot product with a kernel here, right? The kernel is side trainable. So I have this extra patch here. I, I kind of like do a dot product with this kernel here. And then I, 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 I get, um, yeah, and, and then I, I'll get the filter output, right? So for, for graph filters, we can imagine something similar, right? But there's some catches here, as I mentioned like earlier, that there's some cap here. So for graph filter, let's say if I consider this as a graph, now then I can have like for this here, I fix, for example, I just have a three by three kernels. I just say take the uh, layers labels, I say, right? So each node here, I have like eight other nodes right, connecting to it for a graph, right? And uh, if, if this is a, okay, this is less than eight, uh, one more. So um, this, I can design a kernel here. Okay, I have a kernel here and I can have like dot product of like nodes, uh, the, the, um, the signal at each of these nodes with this one. And then like this will be, then I pass to, okay. And also like, okay, actually maybe all these nine guys here. So I, I have A plus one actually also like with, with this uh, sentinel here, target nodes here. And then we'll paste the signal here, right? So it's actually very similar to this one here. Right? So it's like really uh, an extension of this one here. But know that for graph signal, we, we 
info whenever we have graph structure, we throw away some information. Graph like doesn't have really order, doesn't really order your node, right? For example, I have this node, like put it this way, like draw it graphically. Uh, so I draw it, uh, I mean, schematically, but I, I, I don't really, means that this node and this node are distinguishable, right? So therefore, like when we do like uh, this inner portal here, like actually the node itself, like this is the first thing we need to uh, address is like this node are actually not uh, or in order. So we don't know which one is which or like each time I, or maybe I can just arbitrarily pick the order here, but that that will be like uh, a bit um, arbitrary. So um, another remark here is like, we, this is like for a structural graph, of course, right, the image is a structural graph, but in general, like for an arbitrary graph, each node will have like different uh, degree, right? So degree meaning that like each node will connect to different numbers of um, nodes. So therefore like we, we, we need to have like really multiple number of kernels. For example, like we may need to have a kernel that for, I, if I have con, I have a node that have like degree three, it's connected to three nodes. Then I may, I may have a, a kernel of size four here, right? So multiply by each of this guy here. Maybe I, if I have a, a node have degree four, then I, I need to have kernel of like uh, five values in that here. So is that clear? So, um, okay. Uh, Um, yes, and then I, okay, when, when we talk about convolution, that is like, um, basically in GNN, there's two approach. One approach is like more follow this uh, graph signal, graph signal processing people uh, community. That's a like doing a kind of like more, have like more, uh, I would say like theoretical basis. They, and also like these graph cycle process, same people actually derive from uh, people from the spectral graph theory. Uh, this is like this mathematician, I studied that like for decades already, Sp spectral graph theory. And uh, and basically like we, we when we do convolution, like, it's not clear because I like, here, as I mentioned, like, we, we have this kind of problems here. We we are not, we, we either we need to have like multiple kernels or like if I have like a fixed kernel here, uh, if we go to node with like different degrees, I, I need to take care of that like differently and so on and so forth. So uh, things become pretty ad hoc. So instead like maybe we can borrow from classic cell processing and extend to graph cell processing. We know that from classic cell processing that like if we do a convolution, what I mean by convolution, like in spatial domain, it's really a, um, element-wise part in the uh, Fourier domain. So in a sense, we can define convolution in a way trying to do Fourier transform in the, uh, okay, in the way that like refers to a Fourier transform of the signal, the signal and the kernel, and then like do an element-wise uh, multiplication, and then like, and then like do an inverse transform again. So that we will we'll be able def to define a convolution and that will be generalized in all cases. Then the question would be like, how do we define uh, Fourier transform though? So this has been studied for a while by this, um, as I mentioned, like this um, spectral graph theory people. Um, and before I move on, like maybe I, I should uh, define a couple graph matrices. Like, so we mentioned this adjacency matrix a here, so it's just like if the nodes are connected, like this is just uh, will be one. Otherwise, if oh, it's basically like okay, maybe I should put it more uh, precisely. I, I have a graph here is m n nodes here, like n nodes is actually four nodes here. Then the adjacency matrix is like four by four. So basically, like I have a a i j is equal to one if i m j are connected. So I have this tutor representing i m j connected. Otherwise, I not connected then AIJ equal to zero. So that therefore like if I have a graph like this, I, I, I made a graph, I, I, I have like this, this one connect to 
no two here, right? So that's a one here. I'm going to look for a one here also. Sometimes when you have a weight graph, you will put the weight instead of one into the adjacency matrix. For example, like if I weight a graph like this, so then like the adjacency matrix, like for no one here, you see like it's connecting two with weight one, right? So I, I have one here, I'm going to look for it uh, with weight four, so I have four here, something like that. So this is like the adjacency matrix A here. Now let's define a Laplace matrix L. So Laplace matrix is like the the address the degree matrix minus the adjacency matrix. So what is the degree matrix? The degree matrix is just like list the number of degrees like for each of the nodes. Um and I'm then like I'm then like uh, build a matrix with the diagonal you equal to that. So in other words, for example, like for the degree matrix for this guy, it'll be like it's a diagonal matrix and the diagonal equal to like the degree of each of the nodes. So for this one, like one degree is two, eh? two is also degree is two. Eh? So if the no is also degree two or four. So it's simply like uh, this diagonal matrix or so like it's equal to two I here in this case. Um, and uh, okay, maybe, maybe uh, I don't know, should, should I? Okay, maybe maybe I maybe I will continue this time, right? Because I, uh, I, I, I otherwise might may not be have enough time. So anyway, uh, just just stop me though if you have any questions or something like that. So we have Laplace matrix. Will be defined as like D minus A. So it's kind of mysterious, like why this is D minus A. So again, like this is the D matrix, right? Adjacent matrix is A here. So, but let me take an example here. For example, if I have this one, again, this unweighted graph here. So then the Laplacian matrix, right, for this guy is equal to two I minus this uh, one, 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 uh, one, 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 right? So therefore I have to say something like this one here. So um, a remark like why is called Laplacian matrix. I won't go into detail here, but maybe like, Give you a intuition. You can you can derive it yourself. But think of like all this matrix as an operator itself. Like for example, I have the A matrix here. I I can think of like no. Now I have a for example, I have a signal here. Let's say like I have like signal at one two three four. So you could two three one three. Let's say now I can I can apply this A matrix as this signal. So it's simply like I think of this signal here and put it as a vector. So I have uh, two, three, one, three, right? So I have this signal is a like two, three, one, three here. So I can think of like uh, this A operation, like A matrix, a pi on this is just this A multiplied by this uh, signal vector here. So therefore the output will be what? The output will be uh, the first node is equal to this one plus this one, right? So it's like three plus three is equal to six. And then like, two is equal to two plus one is equal to three here. And for this one is a like three plus three here is equal to six again. And for this one is a like two plus one is three. So see, uh, okay. Um, so similarly, I, I can do the same thing for L as well. Like for example, L minus D, I can operate like this guy here, two, three, one, three. Actually, by the way, like uh, let, let's put the signal one, 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 one here, one, 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 one. So if I put one, 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 one here, Know that like if I apply L, L is a by the by the way is D minus A or right? D minus A, uh, and uh, D is just identity matrix is two I right, so therefore like I, I should get like here I should just get uh two 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 here right, and for this guy A matrix apply on this guy. Apparently is also two, 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 right? Because I, if this is one, 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 for the first node here is like two, uh, one plus one, second node is also one plus one and so on. So therefore it's like two, 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 two here. So actually I will get zero here. If I have a op operate Laplace matrix L on this, uh, on this signal, like one, 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 one here, I will go zero. Actually, by the way, like if you have constant signal, this is a, a property for Laplace operator. Like if you have like constant signal, you should always get zero. Um, and remember like what is Laplace operator like in, in, in like uh, 
in uh in for example like 2d or something like it would be something like if you have like that uh laplacian of x here uh, it's like del square x right so del square f like laplacian operator so it's like the uh uh the uh the partial derivative uh or f in x axis like plus y axis here uh, and this should give you zero as well if you have a constant signal. Okay, this give you like another sanity check here. So these two should be kind of like describe the same thing. Um, and uh, this is a bit more mathematical, but I just quickly talk about that. So if you think of L as an operator here, like uh, so you you can L L X as an operator. So you have like L X as I said. Um, Okay, I, I guess I would just give it. Like, I would give it like because I, yeah, this is not very important. But yeah, that that if you are interested, you can go back here like, on this like uh, the video here and take a look this here that you see like uh, a rationale why it's called a passion. Um. Now, what's interesting though is like if you think of like signal, for example, like one D signal is like just a graph signal in of on a path graph here. And then I we think of like what's free transform. Like free transform like basically is a projection into like uh basis like EJ omega x something like that, right? Projecting is projecting to sinusoidal basis. Um and then if you look at like okay what is A operating on like sinusoidal basis Let's say if I have like a path graph here, it's a more or less a structure like this, right? So A multiplied by that, okay, I, I log kind of the boundary condition here, like so I, if I for the N is a uh, near boundary, it would be something different, but like let, let's ignore the boundary condition here. So for some middle N here somewhere, so it would be just A applied to EJ omega N. So this is like the signal at so this is a xn here, the, the signal, the, 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 the xn. Oh, okay. So I have, let's say this is x1, x2 here, x3 and so on, right? So with this particular xn here. So xn will be just equal to this plus this, right? So you say ej w, uh, ej omega n plus one, so the one in the future uh, plus the one in the past plus EJ omega n minus one. But then I, I can group the EJ omega n here, right? And then EJ omega uh, plus uh, minus EJ omega. I, I don't care what is state, but the point is that you look at this one here. This is the eigenvector of A, right? And actually, it's also the eigenvector of L because I, L is equal to D minus A. Right, and D in this case is just an identity matrix. It's just equal to two I right minus A here. If I have like uh, this thing here, I also like maybe I just call it phi n phi omega here. I have phi omega here, so I will have like phi omega, um, A phi omega, and uh, I have like minus E j omega plus D minus j omega here I read earlier, and also like two I phi omega, right? So two phi omega, right? two phi omega. And I can group this phi omega together. So I, I still have like something like this. So therefore like this is still an eigenvector, right? So because I have L, oh, sorry, like I, I should really write better phi something like that, right, phi omega. I have like L phi omega. We'll just get like this multiplied by phi omega, right? So therefore like this is eigenvector as well. So what it means is like if we extend to graph, at least like in the sense if you kind of like specialize uh, from graph to classical 1D signal, uh, you have the Full A basis are essentially eigenvector of L and also A. So there were some choices here. Actually, that people like 
uh, develop different like, Fourier transform. Sometimes they will consider Fourier transform as the projection of eigenvector of A, or like someone consider like eigenvector of L. But either way, you see like um, Fourier transform therefore is just a projection into some eigenvectors of like this uh, graph matrices here. So either L or A. And sometimes like, people uh, also like, like to use this um, L or like in lambda delta here. So the delta is like the normalized eigen, uh, normalized Laplacian. So it's equal to L uh, D one half, D minus one half here. So, and D minus one half, L is a D minus A way. So D minus one half. So therefore we have I minus D minus one half, A D minus one half or something like that. And this one apparently also like the eigenvector like for this guy, if we consider the, the um, for half graph also will be the Fourier basis. So therefore like for graph, we have choices. Like we can pick this, 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 the eigenvectors of this guy as the Fourier basis. So, but let's say like, let, let's use this as a Fourier basis. Use the normalized, this is long like the normalized Laplacian. And let's say like they have eigenvector, let's say phi here, uh, maybe phi one, phi two and so on. Like they, these are the eigenvectors. So then I can have the eigen, um, so then, then in the sense that I should have delta can be decomposed as like five, uh, uh, lambda five transpose here, and this fine transpose here, or like this fine here, is just the eigenvector matrix. Um, now, so then, uh, you can look at the basis here actually, like, uh, illustrate like, okay, this is let's just go back like this. Normalized that Parsian like uh, eigenvector. Of course, like, for one D, like it would just as I mentioned, it degenerate back the Fourier basis, right? It's just a sinusoidal uh, uh, sinusoidal function, right? So, but for graph, like you can look at the eigen basis here. It's kind of interesting, also. So the eigen basis, like, or like the Fourier basis, like, will be something like this, right? If you use the normalized Parsian. So I have a graph here for I don't know population or electricity usage. I don't know what's that signal here, but if you do a Fourier trans, uh, kind of compute the Fourier basis, kind of like diagonalize the uh, normalized Laplacian, then you get the Fourier basis like, like this. Like the first uh, argon function is like this, and the second argon function is like this. So this is like just showing the intensity. I guess red is higher value and blue is smaller value or something like that. So now then we, we have, we can define this, okay, spectral graph uh, conflict now. The spectral graph conflict because I, we need to define the uh, free, uh, so uh, the convolution, right? As I mentioned earlier, the convolution can be think of like free transform, like multiply animal wise, multiply them together and then do an inverse transform, right? So now I will have the free transform is really the projection by the Fourier basis. So for example, I have the signal H here. Uh, this is like N by one here, N nodes here. And I can project that by fine transform. This will give me the Fourier transform, Fourier transform. And then I can do the inverse Fourier transform as like maybe H tilde here uh, multiplied by fine. We'll get back the inverse Fourier transform. Now then, if I, I'm going to do, let's say this is like the filter itself, like it's FW and the Fourier transform, I have like a W hat here. And then like, this is the signal Fourier transform, like by transfer H way. Then I do an animalized, animalized part, like this is like N by one, N by one. Uh, but I can also write this as a, uh, okay, this is actually, I, I think like those people like have bug and then like, they didn't realize that. So, um, yeah, but yeah, because I play with graph cell processing like for the last several years, so we get a little bit more familiar with this. So, but I guess I, the machine learning people don't, don't bother with this. So um, at this here, so what's going on is 
I have a uh, element wise product of this guy with this one here, right? So what I can think of is like, um, let's see what, how, how should I explain this? Um, okay, I think of this, just think of this W hat here. Uh, this this one, uh, okay, this is a, a environmental, environmental, about animalized powder, right? So, but I can generate a matrix, I say a diagonal of W hat multiplied by, let, let me just call this a H hat here, multiplied by H hat, right? And this is a M by M matrix here, right? So it's a, just a diagonal matrix with like W1 and so on, like W and I say, now, I, I can also, like this diagonal, diagonal matrix, I can decompose it to a, um, uh, argon, let's say, if I have like lambda one, let's see, lambda, uh, 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 let's say if I have like argon value of, um, of, uh, Argon value of the graph matrix as I uh, of the sorry not the graph yeah uh, yeah uh, as the graph matrix argon value of the Laplacian uh, as lambda one up to lambda n here. So what I mean is I I have the Laplacian here earlier we call it delta right? Um, I ha I earlier we say like uh, delta is equal to phi lambda fine transfer way. Right? And this is basically the lambda essentially. This is lambda one up to lambda n here, okay. So um, now for any W, like I, what I mean is, what I want is I, I want to generate a matrix like this with a polynomial. So I have like lambda one, let's see, I can, I can explain clearly. So what I mean is I can create, I want to create a polynomial like this. So lambda one up to lambda n, or maybe I just use a lambda here. I use a lambda here. Lambda or I, uh, maybe I, W hat, W Q to C O I plus W tilde, W one tilde uh, lambda plus W two tilde lambda square, so on and so forth. I want that equal to this matrix here, W1, Wn. So I will argue that I will, I will be able to find this W because it's apparently we can find that if this lambda are unique, if this uh, eigenvalues are unique, then this W will, will be, I can easily just formulate that as a linear, a set of linear equation and I will be able to solve it, right? So, uh, more precisely, I can write uh, write that into like W zero, W one, and um, W n, right? And multiply by like some kind of matrix here. So it's a like, depend on this lambdas here. And this lambda, long the lambda is a like, a fixed value, right? Because I I I I'm interested to find this W here, um, and uh, it's equal to W one and up to W n. So if I can do that, then then essentially I can represent like represent this matrix here earlier. This matrix here, this matrix here, as like this polynomial here in that like, or like in, into like W C O lambda something like that, a polynomial of a matrix essentially. So therefore, I will have something like this guy equal to this. So, okay. So I, I know that I, like, because uh, I have a, uh, wait a sec. I, I, I have, um, I have this is a like, polynomial, right? And let's see if, if I have like W zero I plus W one, what I mean is like the polynomial I have, and you say, 
this one is equal to W, uh, w tilde lambda, right, as I mentioned here. So it's like just a polynomial of, um, of this one, polynomial of matrix. Now, if I have like, instead of like, this is lambda, if I have like delta, what do I get? Know that like delta is like the argon vector matrix, like, uh, Oh, I should I shouldn't say that. I, I should say like know that like um lambda are the eigenvalue of delta here. So if I put into substitute delta here, let's say I substitute here, let's just substitute that. So I should have like phi w tilter i plus w one tilter uh delta. Delta is like phi lambda fine transpose right and then uh w2 tilde fine lambda square fine transpose because i square two times like this fine and fine transpose cancel right so you can see the pattern already like i can get like fine and fine transpose pull that out of like wco uh plus plus three tilde tilde plus w1 tilde lambda plus w2 tilde lambda square and so on and so forth now I say almost the same as this guy here, but I have like W tilde delta is actually equal to phi W tilde lambda phi transpose here. So, okay, I guess I spent a bit too much time on this part. So, but anyway, so then I can represent like this convolution with this guy instead. And then the W now will be the trainable like stuff that you can create a lot work. Um, and this is like the the uh the spectral graph like convolution, so it's like more follow the classic graph signal processing uh, paradigm. So now if we ignore all this, like okay, we, we don't care about like Fourier transform, like we just say, okay, we we will do some operation with the graph signal and then see what's going on. So one way we can do it is like okay, we have the graph signal here, right? Then for each of the nodes, like let's say it's just uh for the L iteration like is for the J nodes is HJ, and then I um for let's see oh also yeah, and then I for for if we want to update for node I here we'll take all the labels of the J one, and then I we just multiply by W here, uh of the signal so we know that like I'm multiplying the same W here. So therefore, like as we mentioned earlier, that like because the nodes are not ordered like in the graph. So if I this is no i here, let's say I have two um v nodes here, j here, j let's say like uh one two v here, this is j here. Uh, so for each of this h here, they will be multiplying the same w. And then I will just take the average of that and take the um take the go for like a learning activation function say so um i'll mention a a slight uh modification known as graph stage it's just like we'll take the center node like differently here like you say like uh, actually you say the labels it, it like all that i think it should include the center node probably like the labels i'm also like i as well this one should include the i node here so but this one is just say like for uh, for the label, like it will multiply by W two here, but for the center node, it will multiply by another W. Um, and uh, let's see. And okay, I I think I'm good in, good with time. So I'll mention a couple more like this variation. Like this is molad. I guess I can slow down a little bit now. This molad is um, I have um. Again, the H is the graph signal, right? So I have like two uh, HJ1 and J2 here. Am I trying to update no I? It will be weighted sum of this signal, like and multiplied by this matrix here. Right? I love for uh, WK. Uh, Okay, yeah, this is like, like, like K filter, I guess I multiply with WK, but I can allocate maybe I allocate for the moment, it doesn't bother too much. So the key point is this E here. 
So I have like uh, multiply by W and then like I have this weighted sum by this E or this input. So it's trying to do is like, because like originally you have no, no ordering, right? So the signal from here to here is will be like, uh, have the same weight like with the signal from here and here. So we try to differentiate that like using this E here. So the E what they do is say, like, okay, I will base on like the degree of this node and degree of this node. So you just look at like the degree of one node here and the degree of the other node here, right? And then I will just do some um, kind of like mod modulation right, with this information here. So I get this U here and then I will see like, how this one, uij, uh, uij, uk, uk, we will, we'll, yeah, it's okay. Like this is, a, I guess it's a bit ad hoc. So anyway, so we will use that as an information. So this is one way of common net. So, and then I, I like to mention two more. Uh, and this is, a, I guess I get more uh, related to what we discussed like, earlier. So with the attention network. So again, like, we can have like, I'm also capsule letters as well. Like we have like, uh, we have, we can have like, well, data dependent routing, right? So in the sense that we want to say, this would be depends on the data here. So we can do that again, like you have this weighted by this EIJ here, right? So, but this EIJ will be based on, um, uh, this EIJ hat here, you see like it's going to uh, just do concatenate this, uh, this I know here, I, I multiply by uh, one W here, then I have to show it, you know, multiply by another W here, then I will concatenate this information here and then multiply by another weight. And based on that, I will determine like the weight here. Um, and of course I can do a soft max here, but in the sense it's essentially based on that way. Right? So it is known as this gather on graph attention network. And I guess like this another way graph transforms, transformer is like more similar to the original, like, uh, I guess I guess attention network. So the graph transformer will be like this. I have, um, again, like you see that say like this weight function E again, but I have this E this time will be computed like as you remember, like we have this key uh, and query in transformer. So we have like, uh, this is key. We have this uh, in the J signal here, multiplied by the key matrix and the I, uh, I think I is the, yeah, I is the sentinel in this case. I have I is the sentinels, like is the query. And then I have the key is like all the labels here. K, um, the labels key or the labels like signal will be multiplied with this K KK here, and then the center multiplied by this QA matrix here. And afterward, I will just look at the inner part and use that to determine like the weight. And then like, uh, it will be weighted sum with an other uh, value uh, signal. So the value signal will be computed by modulating the signal by a value matrix. So, okay, uh, I, I know it's a whirlwind tool for graph uh, uh, neural network. So, uh, and uh, I guess I, 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 okay. Last thing I like to do an advertisement like for my class like in fall. Uh, so I, I just copy some notes like, from a copy slides from my another class. I also like, another advertisement, uh, same advertisement like for my class like, in fall. So uh, it will be like on information theory and probabilistic programming. So. I, I taught like information theory for a long period of time, but like it makes more and more like uh, basin stuff like into the class. So now it's like more than half is like on the basin and probabilistic model statistics and so on. So um, of course, like, if you think of like, if you're interested in machine learning, AI and so on, like really like the whole AI discipline have like three important pillars. Like, one is the symbolic models. Like, I have no touch on that one. Like, for example, expert system and so on. The other ones are probabilistic model and, and the last one is neural networks. Of course, we spend lots of time on neural networks like, uh, for this class. And uh, I will talk a lot more about basic model and probabilistic models like, for this course here. So it would be interesting that like, uh, 
also like because I did give like some background uh, for people to study also they were lecture as well for, for example like you have this um, um, variational autoencoder that apparently borrow idea from uh, variational influence like in a graphical model and probabilistic model so um, and uh, anyway I guess 